Mankind had not faced anything like this ever before. <laughs> There's no way to give you any advice. You play it by ear. I was near him at the time and he said, and you see that everybody in the area is undercover around here, which I did. We'd had Hiroshima, we'd had uh, all these places where bombs were dropped and places. And I thought, we're only about two miles away. If it goes up, we will all go with it. And I said, OK. Tui gave the signal for the water to be turned on. The pressure was too high, so I had the pressure reduced, so at least the water was then sinking down through the channels into the fire itself. There was no explosion. But the water wasn't putting out the fire. Tui had one last hope. You had to keep the air on as long as you had men on the charge hoist. Right? And of course, the worst thing you can possibly do is to be feeding a massive fire with air. So I phoned up uh, the general manager, Davy, and said this water's having no effect, but I proposed to shut the air off. If turning the air off didn't work, they had no means of putting out the fire. You've got this blazing inferno with these flames belting out and hitting the back wall. Air goes off and <laughs> just like that. Absolutely incredible. The fire was out. The people of Windscale were saved. To see that you've licked it, huh? with the fire disappearing like that, that was a marvellous feeling. Probably everybody in the reactor building would have been killed. A lot of people on the site would have probably have been killed. The neighbourhood would have been heavily contaminated and the land would probably not be in use to this day. I was so pleased to see him home because I, had, I honestly didn't think I was going to do. But even thinking about it upsets me because I have never been so frightened in my whole life. The Atomic Energy Authority have announced that some uranium cartridges in the center of the atomic pilot wind scale became overheated yesterday. The authority have said that staff are now reducing the temperature of the pile with water. At the moment, a northeast wind is blowing across the wind scale factory and is taking any radioactive dust or vapor out to sea. In fact, it had been turning the air off, not the water, which had put out the fire. And many believed the wind was blowing the radioactivity inland. Well, my impression was that it was blowing a bit eastward. Uh, which would probably be heading more towards Scofell, you know, at, the, at that particular time. The immediate concern appeared to be contaminated milk and the risk that babies could develop thyroid cancer. The government ordered all the milk produced for miles around to be poured away. Emergency at Windscale Atom Plot. And the milk from 200 square miles of farmland is condemned as radioactive. But for these filter tops, once nicknamed Cockroft's Folly because Sir John Cockroft insisted on them, farms much farther away would have faced not emergency but disaster. The farmers carry on as usual, for cows have to be milked, whatever happens to the milk afterwards. You can't explain radioactivity to a cow. Yes, well, I mean, they had to demonstrate how concerned they were. Wonderful public relations. Ooh, they are concerned, the wonderful crowd. Now the worst seems to be over, though Mr. Stan Ritson, who helped to bring Windscale's overheated reactor under control, 
was radioactive for four days and couldn't even kiss his wife till the Geiger counters gave permission. The press hailed the Windscale men as heroes. But within days, the men who had fought the fire would be fighting to clear their names, as Windscale became part of a political cover-up. For Macmillan, the fire at Windscale was a major embarrassment. He was only days away from a meeting where President Eisenhower would announce that Britain was fit to be America's nuclear ally. Macmillan ordered a closed inquiry under Sir William Penny, the man who had led Britain's bomb project. Six days after putting out the fire, the Windscale men were called in, one by one, to account for their actions. The evidence they gave was deemed so sensitive that only now, for the first time, can the tapes be heard. In a room just yards from where the fire had raged, Sir William Penny opened proceedings. To investigate into the cause of the accident at Windscale and the measures taken to deal with it and its consequences. Now, before we start, would you be good enough to say what your job is? The impression that I've retained is going into a room and seeing this very large man. Penny was a big man, but uh, extremely pleasant, courteous and uh, thoughtful and uh, very polite indeed. If you wish to smoke, please do. For nine days, they gave their evidence. They were truly exhausted and they were all worried to death and both for themselves and for the plant. And, you know, it had been a dreadful experience for them, and you can hear it in, their, in the voices of many of them. At first, they said, if it went over 1,200, oh, God help us. And when it kept on creeping up, it, it was quite frightening just not to know what might happen. I was called in, and I remember they wrote up on the blackboard a list of things that they wanted to know. Things had had to be investigated pronto, quick. As the evidence mounted, the role of the new cartridges introduced for the H-bomb became central. Now, is the question, sir, uh, anything Mr. Rotherham can tell us about isotope cartridges? Yes, I tell you they're dangerous. <laughs> Various different things are being cooked up in the reactor, not just uranium, you see, uh, because they were also making material for tritium, for the, for, the, for the thermonuclear bomb, the hydrogen bomb as well, in there. But the tritium certainly was a critical one. Some of the men told Penny that they believed the new lithium-magnesium cartridges had started the fire. The analysis does, in fact, give a very clear indication of what the sequence of events was. What is the sequence? You can get... The AM cartridge, which will, if it's perforated, it will burn. If it burns, the temperature in the channel will rise seven or 800 degrees centigrade. And again, I would have thought the graphite and the power might very well burn under those conditions. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. I can see no further questions that we should want to ask you. Penny began to focus on another possible cause. He asked if the decision to have a second nuclear heating or Vigna release had been a mistake. You did say that you couldn't quite remember whether it was you or not that put on the second nuclear heating. Do you reckon that was the right decision anyhow? Yes. We, we've done this reheating several times before. With no serious ill effect. Thank you. The men were adamant that they hadn't caused the fire. They'd followed the tried and tested procedure. As Penny was conducting his inquiry, Macmillan travelled to Washington to claim his great prize. The one result of the Washington talks is that Britain and America will cooperate more closely in nuclear science. It was a historic moment which would redefine the relationship between their two nations. Macmillan and Eisenhower declared that Britain and America would now be nuclear partners. My grandfather was absolutely over the moon. When they went back to the embassy, they did crack open a bottle of champagne to celebrate. 